Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about player engagement. Player engagement is what a game does to make the player feel more involved in gameplay. And I'm going to get into it, but I want to make two concepts clear first. First of all, player engagement is a very modern term. I think it started about 10 years ago, 15 tops. We didn't used to talk about player engagement. I defy you to find an interview uh, uh, about Fallout or any of the Troika games where we talk about player engagement. What we did instead is we thought about what was fun, what did we want to be able to do, what's a feature we've never seen in a game before, and then we added that. Player engagement is, a, is pretty modern, and it also coincides with something else, which I'm not going to talk about. But I want to distinguish player engagement from player addiction. Addiction is when a game performs or has features that not make the player feel more involved, but make the player feel like there is a reward coming soon, so they need to keep playing. Um, it's interesting. Player engagement is fun. Player addiction can feel frustrating. Both involve the player spending more time in the game. But what's interesting about addiction is, and you, if you've watched my randomness video, and I talked about how often randomness is used in games, random reward is the most addicting reward strategy that there is. It has been studied on humans and animals, and it creates behaviors that are very hard to extinguish. Basically, random reward is when you just periodically give something that the uh, subject wants. In the most famous experiment of this was pigeons were just given food pellets at completely random intervals. They found that not only did they wait by the food dispenser, but they would often start doing like little dances or head movements because Pigeons, like humans, think the world revolves around them and thought they were doing something to make those food pellets come out. And that random reward happened to coincide randomly with some behavior the pigeon was doing. So then they started doing it. And when it didn't work, they'd do it again and they'd do it again. And eventually a pellet would come out because it was random. And then that locked in that behavior. By the way, if you ha couldn't tell, um, <laughs> in addition to my computer science major as an undergraduate, I minored in psych because I was going to go into AI. I thought that would help. Anyway, I had to study this a lot. Random reward strategy is used in many games, but it's most often used in games with ad revenue, like a lot of mobile games, because those games rely on the player coming back frequently to play and having long play sessions, because both of those behaviors mean that there will be a lot of ads served, and that's how they make their money. So let's talk about player engagement not player addiction. So player engagement is making the player feel immersed, involved, uh, want, wanting to interact with the game, not necessarily waiting for rewards, but just, I like what I'm doing, I'm going to do that a lot. There's a bunch of ways you can uh, increase player engagement. Uh, the best one I've ever found is just to have several different types of gameplay. And this is separate from different kinds of player builds. I mean, you could make a stealth character or a combat character. What I'm talking about is if the game you're making can have the player do different things, maybe they can do combat. Maybe they do exploration where they find cool stuff. Maybe they can talk with interesting NPCs. Maybe they're collecting things. Maybe they're crafting things. All these are different types of gameplay that have different rhythms and enjoyment and no player likes all of them, but most players like most of them. And so if your game can include those and then swap among them fairly regularly, players won't get bored. If, if it's just combat, 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 players will get bored. But if it's combat, oh, now you get to explore this area. Oh, those are those things I was trying to collect. Because if I collect all 10, I get some cool reward. They start doing that. Oh, wait, I just found a recipe and I have most of the ingredients. I'm going to craft something. Those kind of things create player engagement because they're interesting, they're different, they're fun, and they all have their own rewards at the end. And they may have different reward periods. Some of them you get rewarded seconds after 
you engage the behavior. Others require minutes or hours and sometimes even days. I remember um, learning this lesson even in combat. You saw it a lot in the early MMOs like EverQuest. They had things called trash mobs, which you could just kill very easily. And then it lit up the bosses, which would require sometimes groups or multiple groups for raids to take down that boss. Having that variation, that huge spectrum in combat, that alone made combat more interesting. Um, one problem I ran into in Wildstar was one of the other devs wanted to just make everything bosses. He goes, look, people love bosses. Let's just all do boss. Let's just make everything a boss. And that's where I, I said my phrase, which I know I've put in another video, about people like roller coasters much more than monorails. It doesn't matter how high up the monorail is, still a monorail. So if you made a game of all bosses, it's not going to be as fun. I know Shadow of the Colossus was all bosses, but there was a lot of riding on your horse in between them. And every boss was very different. So having a bunch of things to do in your game is great. As the game progresses, you should always introduce new things to do. For example, for combat, you could have combat mechanics that don't unlock until later in the game, such as, you know, skill combinations or abilities that when you get them to a certain level, unlock new things you can do with them. This means that the player who's used to combat suddenly has a new thing he can do in combat. Maybe after three regular swings, he can do a power swing. Maybe after uh, three swings, he can do a cleave and hit multiple creatures at once. That brings a whole new level of tactics to this combat that they're already used to doing. Ability unlocks are the same way. Uh, in Outer Worlds, as you, went up a lo as you went up levels, you were encouraged to spend points in single skills because they unlocked more things that skill could do. This meant that even though the player was already using that skill, he could suddenly use it to do more things, or he could do he he'd get more fun out of using the skill, more variety. That's the great thing about those uh, skill unlocks and new combat mechanics. They create more variety and therefore give you more types of play and more things you can switch between to create that player engagement. I also think it's important, and this is just a personal thing, but I think the player should often have a choice in what to do. One thing that I think improves engagement is when the player, he could do combat, or he could sneak by it, or he could talk to the thing. Just the fact that when you approach this NPC, you have these options and what you want to do creates an interesting engagement in itself because the player is being told your agency is important and you need to decide, and that's going to change what's happening going forward. Another really good way of introducing player engagement is to have mysteries in the game. Things that the player hears about, gets a clue about, isn't exactly sure what's going on, and starts to investigate it. Now, those could be done in different levels. You could have quest level mysteries where when you start a quest, you're not sure what's going on. And then when the quest resolves, you're like, oh, I see, they were a vampire. Or, oh, I get it. They went exploring the dungeon and they died. That's why they never came back. But you can also have story level mysteries. It's like, why are these corporations acting this way? That doesn't seem like in their best interest. Oh, they know that food doesn't have enough nutrition and they're, they don't know how to solve it. So they're misdirecting it with by putting out lots of snacks that make people feel full and they don't realize they're slowly starving to death. Those are the kind of mysteries you can put in the game and sometimes don't solve them all. Um, the Outer Worlds mystery of... What happened to Earth is still a mystery at the end of the game. That's great. That forms a kind of player engagement that may make people want to play the sequel, where you can solve that mystery and introduce new ones. That's the kind of onion-level storytelling that I like to do. Another way to increase player engagement is with challenge. Now, challenge is making the player feel like the game is constantly throwing things at them that are hard to do and they have to figure out like how are all my skills and abilities and perks what combination of them do I need to do to get past this challenge this is hard to do because it's really the balance and let's just be frank I'm not that good at balance um, I often relied on other people to help me balance my games because of that I think it's especially hard in the games I make because there are so many player builds trying to make Balance and therefore challenge for all those different player builds are very difficult. What's hard for a dialogue character 
may be really easy for a combat character. So that kind of challenge is hard to put in a lot of RPGs. I think it's possible. I think one way to do it is to make challenging side quests because like I said, since the main story quests have to be done by every player build, they're necessarily tuned to the weakest build that a player could make, but they still have to get through those main story quests. And then you can make the side quests challenging. And the side quests can be really rewarding with items and crafting recipes and XP in a way the main story quests don't have to be because the main story quests are their own reward advancing the story. And then the final thing about player engagement that, that's important to talk about is when the player fails. When he tries to do something and isn't successful, you have to make sure that your game always makes this the fault of the player and not the game. Players will look for a reason your game is at fault. I talked about it in the randomness video where they missed three times in a row with a 95% chance to hit and they were convinced the random number generator was wrong. Yet, you can play D&D and roll three ones in a row and you know it's your fault. Although, even then I've seen people go, my dice are bad. These are bad dice. I knew somebody who used to, when he got bad rolls, he'd put the dice back in the little plastic container and isolate them. He said they were in dice jail for a while. That's a perfect play of, people will always find a way of blaming anyone but themselves, but you need to make sure your game, as much as possible, shows that it's the player's fault. I think Nintendo does a great job of this. When you're playing Super Mario World, they're, they're you know, side they're, they're perfected side-scroller. Whenever you fail... You always knew it was because, oh, I didn't jump out of the way of that thing, or I mistimed jumping over the chasm, or I didn't, uh, you know, put up my shield or duck or whatever. You, it always feels like it's your fault. The problem I have with a lot of online games is once you start playing an online game, there's always that worry that other people will be using cheats. There's always the worry that lag is the reason you didn't, you know, like I shot that guy he before he shot me. Because of lag, you both may have seen yourself shoot first. So there's a lot of ways that games like that can appear that it's not your fault, which is then frustrating the player, which then reduces player engagement. So these are my thoughts on player engagement. Pretty much have several types of gameplay, swap among them, extend them, introduce new ways of doing things, make sure the player has the choice in what to do it, that there's challenge, and that if the player ever fails at something, they know it's because of something they did so they can immediately replay and try something else. I think if you do all these things, you can get a highly engaging game without having to dip into all that player addiction stuff I mentioned at the beginning.